So you can give me all the evidences all day and he will refute them with other evidences. It has become a a creed in the heart of this person which he is looking to die for. Very rarely do these ones come back. Do you see why this one is more dangerous? Did you know, just to give you the dangers of these shubuhat, did you know that Ali ibn Abi Talib was killed in the name of Islam? Did you know that the perpetrator of this horrible act claimed that he was growing closer to Allah? Should have doubts from that. As our Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was waking up the owner of the Salah when he was the Khalifa, and this evil, wretched man, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam, he strikes him with a sword from behind. And our beloved Ali ibn Abi Talib is taken home as he rushes with the gushes with blood. This man, Abdul Rahman, he runs away, but the Sahaba are quick to chase him and catch him and bring him to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali, he looks at him as he takes his final breaths and he says, Ya Adu Allah, Alam akum ahsin ilayk, O enemy of Allah. Did I not used to do good to you? Did I not used to do? He said, you did. He said, فَمَنْ لَنِي حَمَلَكَ عَلَى رَسَلَةٍ What made you do what you did to me? He said, let me tell you something, Ali. هذا السيف لقد شهدته أربعين يوما وأغرقته في السلم أربعين يوما وسألت الله أن يقتل به شر خلقه. He says, this sword which I hit you with, O oh, Ali, I had sharpened it for 40 days. And I had drenched it in poison for another 40 days. And I asked Allah, this man is making dua. And I asked Allah that I should kill with it the worst of his creation. Do you see the dilemma? Although the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told Ali in authentic hadith, Ashqal al-akhirin al-ladhi yaqtulub, the worst of people is the one who kills you. But he thinks he's going closer to Allah. Ali ibn Abi Talib was killed in the name of Islam. Ali, who was once forced to speak positively about himself. And he says in a couplet of poetry, Muhammad ibn Nabi akhi wa sahili, wa hamzatun sayyidu shuhada'i ammi, wa ja'far al-ladhi yunsi wa yudhi yatihu ma'al malaikati ibn ummi, wa bintu Muhammadin sakani wa zawji, manurtu nahmuha bidami wa lahmi, wa sidata ahmadin wa ladaya minha, fa ayyukum lahu sahmun ka sahmi. He says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is my brother and my in-law. And Hamza, the leader of all martyrs, is my uncle. And the two grandchildren of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are my grandchildren. And the wife and the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima, is my wife. And Ja'far who's flying in the paradise with wings with the angels, he is my brother, so who of you can be compared to me? This Imam, who was given that tidings of paradise numerous times, was killed in the name of Islam. Do you see now come on, the danger of Shubuhat, the doubtful matters in the deen? We need to rectify our ibadah and actions of worship from time to time and just measuring against the authentic Sunnah. The solution of Shahawat and Shubuhat, but it needs several lectures on its own. But to summarize it all, to summarize it in perhaps just a sentence, and we will leave it at that. Whoever memorizes from me, if you can, my brothers and sisters. Whoever distances himself from his being will fall into the nets of shahawat. And whoever distances himself from the correct understanding of the being will fall into the nets of shubuhat. Whoever distances himself from his deen, from the understanding of Al-Akhirah, the ins and outs of paradise, the ins and outs of the meaning of taqwa, I ask Allah to make you and me among them. This person will fall into the traps of shahawat and temptation. Likewise, now shubuhat, whoever moves away from the correct understanding of the deen will fall into the tribe of Abdul Rahman ibn Mujam and his lights. Let us move on. Because I have 15 minutes left. Apparently. The future or the Shabbat of tomorrow. What are we required? What is required of us? What is the next move? What are the type of Shabbat rules which we want to come out of this lecture theater? The first characteristic. We want Shabbat of Hijrah. 
Shabab of immigration, and now the organizers of this event are thinking, oh no, oh dear. Shabab of hate our immigration, but not the type of immigration necessarily which you are thinking about at present. Immigration in Islam it takes three meanings. The first is a meaning which no longer applies. It is the hitter from Mecca to Medina. The immigration from Mecca to Medina. And this no longer applies. Because Mecca has now been conquered and it is the land of Islam. So there is no need to flee persecution from Medina or from Mecca to Medina. The Prophet Ali says in Bukhari al Muslim on the authority of Aisha, there is no immigration after the conquest of after the conquest of Mecca. So this isn't the type of immigration which we are talking about. Okay, what is the second? It is a meaning which is a little bit wider than the first. It is an immigration from the land of disbelief to the land of Islam. And this immigration is an obligation on some and not an obligation upon <coughs> others, depending upon these individual circumstances, whether a person is able to uphold the banner of Islam or the acts of ibadah which he needs as a Muslim or not. This is not the platform to discuss it, nor is it the type of hijrah I am necessarily referring to at present. What about the third type? This is the universal type of immigration, which I am asking of myself and you today. This is the hijrah of sin to righteousness, exactly. The Prophet Ali says, as can be found in Bukhari and Muslim, المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده والمهاجر من حجر ما نحى الله عنه He says the Muslim, listen, the Muslim is the one whom the other Muslims are saved from the evil effects of his tongue and hands and the immigrant, listen to the definition, and the immigrant is one whom immigrates from that which Allah has prohibited. Shabab of Hijrah. Number two. We want Shabab who capitalize and invest in this temporal moment of zeal and energy and power. Brothers and sisters, the delights and the splendor and luxury of being able to memorize the words of the Quran in the span of a minute or so, that's not going to remain forever. And the luxury of prostrating to Allah for long, prolonged periods of time and tasting that sweetness of being close to Him, that khalwa, that privacy with Allah, that will deteriorate soon. When the knees, they begin to, begin to get a little bit stiffer. The ability to fast extra days during the intense heat which we are witnessing. The ability to withhold or to remove habits which have become embedded, that will soon go. So what are we doing with our shabab? Wallahi, this is the youth which caused the poets to cry. Abu Atahiyah, he says, لَكَيْتُ عَلَى الشَّبَابِ بِنَمْعِ عَيْنِي وَلَا يُغْنِي الْبُكَاءُ وَلَا النَّحِيبُ أَلَا لَيْتَ الشَّبَابَ يَعُودُ يَوْمًا فَأُخْبِرُهُ بِمَا فَعَلَى النَّشِيبُ He says, I am crying, I have cried over the youth which has left me, but how will tears avail me? And then he says, I wish youth would visit me for just one day so that I can tell it about the difficulties of our people. <laughs> Abdullah ibn Abbas, as can be found in the Sunan of al darimi when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, he went to one of the companions of the Ansar, and he asked him a question. He says, What do you think about us now starting to gain knowledge? Why don't we start learning this now together? Because the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are many. Let's go and learn hadith from them. But look at the bubble bursting response, and how many times have we all heard it? He says to him, How strange you are, O Abbas. He says, How strange you are, O Abbas. Do you really think that a time will come when people will need to get knowledge from you? Abdullah ibn Abbas, he didn't cry and wail over this. He said, that up to who I left him. And he begins to describe the journey and the pain and suffering he went through to now embark upon the knowledge or the quest of gaining knowledge. He says, I would sometimes go in the siesta of Arabia when everybody was asleep in Mecca or Medina. And I would go to the 
house of a learned person and I will take off my garment and I will put it under my head. And the wind would blow very hot sand over my face as I wait for this learned man to come out of his house. And then he would open the door and he'd see me lying on his doorstep. He says, you are the cousin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why don't you knock on my door? I would have come to you. Abdullah ibn Abbas would say, I'm here in knowledge of you. I have to come to you. Anyhow, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, later on, this man, he saw me. Which man? The one who burst his bubble. Said, never going to need you. <laughs> Many years later, he says, this man, he saw me. And there was a huge crowd of people all around me taking knowledge from my mouth. This young man, he just looked at Ibn Abbas and he says, كَانَ ذَلِكَ الْفَتَىٰ أَعْقَلَ مِنِّي he says, that young man over there was a lot wiser than I. So what are we doing with this youth? And how are we investing it? And down what avenue are we using it? We want to look back at this moment, Ikhwan. When we hit the age of 18, 90, whatever we may live to, and say, Alhamdulillah, I reached my pinnacle. I couldn't have done more. Identify those abilities of yours which are written away. You have abilities. And ask yourself, am I investing them correctly in the deen? Am I exercising them in a way which pleases Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, we need youth of tajarrud. We need youth of tajarrud. Youth who have absolutely no interest in position and authority and failure and praise. Particularly you. Oh, you who have raised the most honorable of all banners. O oh, you who have occupied the most noble of all posts, this is the post of Dawah. And why shouldn't it be the most noble of all posts when it was the one occupied by the prophets and messengers? You need this the most out of anybody else with expectations is in you. Tajabud. Tajabud. Wallahi Imam al Bukhari, he narrates on the authority of Abu Rayyad that our Prophet he says, We're almost finished now. We're almost finished. He says, Tawba li'abidin, paradise is for he who Tawba li'abidin, akhidin li'alaa li'farasihi, fi sabi'illah. Ash'at rasuhu mubbatatin qadama. In kana fi al-hirasati, kana fi al-hirasa. Wa in kana fi al-saqati, kana fi al-saqa. Wa in istakdan, lam yu'dhan lah. Wa in shafa'a, lam yushafa'a. He says, paradise is he. Paradise is for he. This is the key to the description. A person who is holding on to the reins of his horse for the sake of Allah. He's working for the sake of Allah. His hair is disheveled. And his feet are dusty, meaning he's a very humble, unknown person. He says, if this person is placed at the forefront of the army, he is pleased. And if he is placed at the rear of the army, he is still just as pleased. And if he asks for permission, he isn't given permission. And if he makes an intercession, his intercession isn't accepted. He is a very humble man, not known, not looking for praise, but he is just happy to be serving the deen. Whatever avenue he is placed, I am the president, alhamdulillah, I will work to the best of my ability. I'm the secretary, I'm the treasurer, I'm the dawah coordinator. I'm going to excel the most sincerest of my actions. I don't care where I'm post. I am, I am the one who is cleaning the toilets, hoovering the vestry. It doesn't matter as long as I am a khalim and the servants of the believers. I am happy to be part of this movement. <laughs> These are the hearts which you need to Number four. I guess we will close with this one then. We need youth who know the source of their pride and dignity, like our uncle mentioned to us today, Jazakallah Khair. Youth who know where your dignity stems from, not in caste or color or lineage or outer physical splendor or beauty or muscular appearance, none of that. But it returns to the Quran and the Sunnah which you so adamantly follow. What do you know about the Arabs before Islam? What civilization did they pride themselves with before Islam? What technical and social and scientific academic advancement did they have before Islam? Nothing! Nothing at all! And Allah, He summarizes the condition of us Arabs before the advent of Muhammad and the Wahi, 
the revelation. Do you know what we were? Allah mentions. 